Well, it's been a very unusual process, this one. Um, it's a huge regulation change, biggest one we've had since 1983 when the um, Venturi cars were banned and flat bottom cars introduced. So the aerodynamic changes which lead as a representation to this are designed to help overtaking. So the theory is that if you create a shape where as the downforce is produced that always um, kind of produces a posh at the back of the car so you get this kind of rooster tail coming up at the back. If that then back fills or side fills from underneath then the weight from the, follow from the car is, is, goes above the car that's following it. So therefore the car behind keeps its downforce much better than it does currently. What they wanted to do is clearly to create the, generate the downforce from the ground compared to before it was. But generated by the ground, but also mainly by the front wing, rear wing and the bodywork. It will affect for sure the ride of the car, the mechanical grip, and for sure the drag of the car. Because this generation of downforce is quite efficient, then yeah. this type of car should be lots quicker on the straight at ISO level of downforce. Well, the nose box is certainly longer, so wherever you put your split for front of chassis into the structure at the front, that structure has got a lot longer, the overhang is greater. Uh, the thinking is, road relevance is that the majority of road cars now have relatively big wheels, but they also come with pretty low profile tyres. We've come up on the wheel size to 18 inches as a, as a line in the sand. Um, it's certainly put a bit of weight onto the car. Yeah. Um, the tyre is bigger overall, so it has a fairly significant aerodynamic effect. And uh, then you've got the characteristics of the big tyre to try and understand as well. We've all sort of got reasonable knowledge of last year's ones. It's a bit of a new, uh, new drawing board for us, isn't it?